kids, Miss Kulkarni here. In this video, we will talk about Vesper theory in covalent compound and how it is useful to predict the shape of those molecules. So what exactly is Vesper theory and how it is useful? Vesper theory is valence shale electron pair repulsion theory and it can predict 3D shape of covalent molecules and these are examples of 3D shapes for different molecules. So how do we predict the shape of a covalent molecule using Vesper theory? These are the steps. Number one, we draw Lewis dot structure for the molecule. Step number two, we find out the ABX formula for the compound. And number three, we predict the shape based upon ABX formula. And here is a table which will help us predicting shapes of molecules if we know the ABX formula. So AB2 will be linear, it will look like this. AB3 will be trigonal planar, it will look like that and so on. So let's actually take some examples and find out how it works. For this molecule BeCl2, first of all, we need to find out the number of valence electron. And we have 1 beryllium and 2 chlorine atoms. Beryllium comes in group number 2. So that gives rise to 2 electrons. Chlorine, we have 2 chlorines and each one comes from group number 7. So we end up having 14 electrons that gives 16 valence electrons total for beryllium chloride. Using this information, when we draw Lewis dot structure, this is how it looks. Beryllium will be the central atom and chlorine around that. If you look carefully, each chlorine has 8 electrons. How about beryllium? It has got 4 electrons around it. But was that the exception for octet rule? Of course, yes. That means this is the perfect Lewis dot structure for BeCl2 and we actually used up all 16 electrons. Let's find out more information about beryllium chloride. Number of bonded atoms on central atom. We have beryllium central atom and there are two chlorine atoms bonded to it. So this is equal to two. Number of non-bonded pairs of electrons on central atom. We don't have any electrons that are not bonded so that is equal to zero. Using this information we can derive ABX formula. A is the number of atoms for central atom. We only have one. B is the number of atoms that are surrounded and bonded to central atom. That is two. And this actually is X. And we have x equal to 0, so we don't write that. Which means we got AB2 as the ABX formula for beryllium chloride. So let's summarize the information. Our molecule was beryllium chloride. The general ABX structure was AB2. And using the table, we get the Vesper shape as a linear shape. And the 3D structure for that shape will look like these. Here is our next molecule, BF3, and let's find out the number of valence electron which are present in this molecule. So we have one boron molecule and three fluorine molecule. Boron is in group number three, that means we get three electrons. Fluorine is in group number 17, so we have 7 electrons from each fluorine and 7 times 3 is 21, so we got total electrons 24. Now let's put this information in Lewis dot structure and this is what we get as Lewis dot structure. We have boron as the central atom, all three fluorine atoms surrounding it, so if you count there are 8 electrons around each fluorine and we have three atoms, that means it is three times eight, 24 electrons. And that's what we actually had. So let's find out more information about this molecule. Number of bonded atoms on central carbon atom. 
we have each fluorine bonded to boron and since we have three fluorines that is equal to three number of non-bonded pairs of electrons there are no electrons which are unshared or not bonded that is equal to zero so we get general abx structure a is the central atom we only have one b is the atom surrounding which is three and of course x is equal to zero also remember boron has only six electrons around it but that still forms a stable structure because that was one of the exceptions for octet rule so let's put the information together for boron trifluoride the general abx formula is ab3 the shape according to our table is trigonal planar and it will look like these pictures moving on to next compound sih4 and let's find out the valence electrons which are in this compound so we have one atom of silicon that comes from group 14 so we get four valence electron and hydrogen we have four atoms each atom brings one electron so totally it is four together when we add we get eight electrons and when we put the Lewis dot structure what do we get here it is silicon as the central atom and all four hydrogens around it and if we take a quick count for electrons that is equal to eight which is the total number of valence electrons for the molecule uh, let's find out information about the molecule number of atoms that are bonded to calcium are these four hydrogens number of non-bonded pairs of electrons we don't have any in this molecule so that's equal to zero so what does that give you abx formula a is the number of atoms for the central molecule we only have one b is the atom surrounding so it's equal to four and of course x is equal to zero so we won't write that information so let's look at this again the molecule is sih4 abx structure is ab4 the vesper shape is tetrahedral according to our table and this is the way it will look in 3d shape our next molecule is ph3 let's take the valence count we have one phosphorus and three hydrogen phosphorus comes from group number 15 so we have five valence electron that gives total of five hydrogen each hydrogen brings one so we get totally three and when we add up we end up having eight electrons as total valence electrons and what happens when we put those together this is the Lewis dot structure we end up getting now what do you notice there are these two electrons which are unshared electrons so let's go and complete the information here number of bonded atoms on central carbon atom we have three hydrogens so you're going to put that as three number of non-bonded pairs of electrons around central atom is only equal to one even though these are two electrons remember that is equal to one pair so general abx structure will be a equals one that corresponds for phosphorus b is three atoms surrounding and x is equal to one so there it is a b three x and here is all the information about ph3 we got abx structure as ab 3x the shape is trigonal pyramidal and that's the way it will look in 3d pictures moving on to next molecule h2o we have two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom the total number of valence electron from hydrogen will be two times one which will be two and each oxygen will bring six valence electron so total will be two plus six equals eight and when we put that into Lewis dot structure we get a structure like this and what do you notice there are two pairs of electrons which are unshared so when we go back here and fill the information number of bonded atoms on central atom are two hydrogen so it's two 
number of non bonded pairs of electrons are these two so that will be two so that gives you a b x structure as a for central atom b is two because of two atoms here and x is also equal to two a b two x two and for that a b x structure the vesper shape is bent so water is a bent molecule and this is the 3d picture for that moving on our next molecule is asbr5 let's find out the total number of valence electrons and we have one arsenic atom and five bromine atoms each arsenic atom is going to bring five electrons because it belongs to group number 15 and each bromine will bring seven valence electron so that makes it 35 from bromine and when we add those together that is 40 that means we have a total of 40 valence electrons and if we draw the Lewis dot structure this is the way it will look we have arsenic as the central atom. then we have all bromides around arsenic and after sharing electrons arsenic will make sure that every surrounding atom has its octet complete how many electrons we used up we have five bromine atoms and each of those have their octet complete so five times eight that is 40 so that makes it a perfect Lewis dot structure how many atoms are bonded here to central atom those are the bromine atoms surrounding and that is equal to five are there any electrons which are not bonded or unshared no we don't have any of those that means that is equal so with that the general abx formula will be a equals one that's arsenic b is surrounding atom which is equal to five and x is equal to zero which we don't write so that's our arsenic pentabromide this is our abx structure as ab5 using the table the predicted vesper shape is trigonal bipyramidal and this is the way it is going to look okay, let's take one more compound here it is sef6 let's find out the valence electrons for this compound we have one selenium and six fluorine atoms each of the selenium is going to bring six electrons because that's in group number 16 and each of the fluorine will bring seven electrons because that's group number 17 which makes it 42 and the total will be 48 electrons so when we put the Lewis dot structure this is what we get we have selenium as the central atom all fluorines are around it and then after putting two electrons representing a bond each peripheral atom gets eight electrons and at this time let's take the count we have six fluorine atoms and it has eight electrons around it so how many electrons is that that's equal to 48 so we used up all the electrons which were given as valence electron so again this makes it a perfect Lewis dot structure let's answer these questions how many bonded atoms are present the central atom is selenium and we can see there are six fluorine atom so that's equal to six how many non-bonded or unshared pair of electrons do you see there it's none there are no electrons which are unshared and what is the abx structure for that a is the number of central atom that's equal to one b is the atoms surrounding which are six fluorine so it will be a b six and of course x is equal to zero which we don't write so this is to summarize the information selenium hexafluoride has the formula sef6 the general abx structure for that is a b six according to the tables using vesper theory we get octahedral shape predicted for this molecule and how is it going to look like these are the pictures which indicate how the molecule will appear in 3d structure so guys i hope you understood what vesper theory is and how it is used for predicting shapes of covalent molecules i hope you guys enjoyed the video 
I'll see you again in next video. Until then, bye-bye.